everyone. Welcome to your weekly edition of Show Me How It's Done. My name is Lauren Urbonis and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. So it is January 2024 at the moment and it is very cold here. So thank you for giving me something to do besides shoveling snow or going outside with my dog who loves winter and thinks that we should just be out there all the time. Uh, so Ara, she's an Alaskan Malamute and this doesn't really phase her. We've kind of had to force her to come sleep inside and whatnot, but uh, she just wants to be outside and playing and going for walks. So I did get back from that. You might be able to tell I'm a little rosy still, um, but that's okay. Now I'm inside and I get to play with you guys with a really, really fun card. So this card features three of our celebration items from our January and February celebration promotion. So let me just briefly tell you what we're using today. The first is probably the most obvious. It is the Jungle Pals stamp set. So this is a free item if you're placing a $60 order. And please keep in mind that $60 is uh, Canadian. So if you're somewhere else in the world, your values might be different than ours. And uh, if you don't have a demonstrator and you need catalogs or you would like to see what's available, my website's at the bottom and you can see what's online or send me a message and I'll get a catalog out to you. So here's our Jungle Pals stamp set. That's free with a $60 purchase. You can also have the option of getting a set of matching dies and these are free with a $120 purchase. There is also a tree die Right here, you can see the sloth using it. I'm using that later on, so I just wanted to have it available. So all together, this bundle would of course mean you're placing a $180 order to get both of these parts, but that can easily be justified if you're purchasing some new stamp sets or some papers from the catalog and you're just getting freebies. And that's the great thing. I would suggest if you're aiming for both of these, bump your order up to 200 because at that $200 mark, you get $20 in free hostess rewards. Okay, so if you're curious about that, message me. And then the last thing that we're using is this paper in the back. So that is another celebration freebie. That is the Sunny Days Designer Series paper. And I actually do have a brand new package here that I just got in. So I can show you some of the fun patterns. It's all double-sided. And I used this paper on one of my club cards this month, actually a couple of them, and we had so much fun. So make sure to check out um, my monthly club video because I did post it publicly this month. This is the one that we used here. You can see in the back, here's that beautiful sky. But the funny thing about this paper is it goes from like a cloudy sky to raindrops falling. So in order to make these cards, I used these top sections. I think I was able to get three strips worth. And then I haven't figured out yet what I want to do with these raindrops. I could purchase the Sunny Days bundle and use some of the cloud dies and cut these clouds out. So that's an option for me, but I will save that for another day. All right, let's get you guys crafting. Oh, sorry, we used one more thing. This is the softly sophisticated embossing folder hiding right in here. This guy is a 120 item free with a $120 purchase. And let me explain why. It's because you do not just get a embossing folder. There is also a coordinating stamp set that you can earn as well. So you get both of them together and that is a $120 freebie. So that's the other thing I'm using on today's project. Just so you guys know, I do have all the measurements listed in the description. So if you're watching this live, um, you can kind of try and frantically cut as we go along. Or if you're watching the replay, that's perfect because you're able to just click pause right now, go to that description, and you can cut all these pieces in advance and not have to stress about uh, going really quickly with me. But I'll try to give you them as we go too. Okay, this card, let me just show you it first has a lot of pieces to it, but it's very cute and it's very fun. So let's build it. 
we're going to start with a card base. And I have chosen to use Lemon Lime Twist for my base here. So this is going to be four and one quarter by eight and a quarter. Four and one quarter by eight and a quarter. And then I think when I scored it, it was on my board like this because my notes say to score at five and a half. So of course that would be right here. So we've scored at five and a half and that's how we're gonna make this front part of the card, this base part, okay? So let's flip it open. I always like to do something on the inside and I did add a little sloth to my sample, which you can come back and do later if you'd like. We're going to need a few layers here. So first off, I have a piece of shaded spruce. That's going to be four inches by five and one quarter. And then a piece of basic white that will be three and three quarters by five. So grab yourself some tape or seal or whatever kind of flat adhesive you like. And we're going to add that into the card here. Okay. Don't forget if you have big nails or something preventing you from getting that adhesive off, we have our take your pick tool. It's really easy just to use in this kind of card. Just poke it underneath the adhesive. Pull up. There we go. So as I mentioned later on, you're welcome to come back and stamp another sloth on here if you want, or something else is fine too, okay? Now on the front panel here, this guy here, that's where we're going to put this cute little piece that I have pre-embossed for us, and that was of course using that simply sophisticated embossing folder. So this piece needs to be, let me just give you the right one, two and a half by four. Okay, so two and a half by four, and you can see this side has raised bumps. This side is kind of indented. Both patterns will look great. So whichever one you prefer, you can have showing on the front. going to put that on the front part here, like so. Now, what I'm going to build next is this little panel piece, but I like to do that off the card, okay? So I'm gonna move my base out of the way. We will, of course, need it later, but we're gonna do a little bit of work with our front panel to begin with. So to start with, we're gonna grab our designer series paper. This piece should be three inches by four inches. And I'm actually going to cut my tree for the front of this piece before I add it to these two. And that's just so I have the flexibility of um, deciding where, you know, how I want it to look. So if you really wanted to, you could cut yourself a scrap piece of paper that's four inches long exactly. But I like to go a little wider and just cut a scrap that's about two and a half, or two inches by probably four and a half. It doesn't have to be perfect. Then you're gonna take this tree die, because we don't need to waste a whole piece of paper, and decide which set of branches you love the most, okay? So the piece that I've suggested will fit on any of them, but I like this middle branch here. So I'm going to have my die featuring this branch for my sloth here, okay? So a little tip for you, when you're cutting the tree, we're always tempted to line our dies up to the edge of our papers. But with this tree, there are some ridges that kind of give feature to your tree trunk. And if you line up right to the edge, it kind of makes your tree look a little shallow. So my suggestion to you is just to kind of come off the edge about an eighth of an inch 
and that way you're going to get a nice wide tree trunk and then those ridges in the middle that kind of give it character instead of something that looks like it's very shoved to the side of your page. Okay, so I've already cut mine out and it will look like this. And I have a choice now. I can either choose to keep this bottom branch if you're featuring something besides some grass down here, or if you wanna put the grass and you kind of want that hidden, you're going to end up trimming this little branch off, okay? I don't know where my scissors are. So I'm just gonna give it a rough rip and nobody's gonna see it because it's hiding behind the grass. So it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna cut that off and now I'm going to add this to my background piece here. Don't worry about putting the branch down. In fact, you kind of want it sticking up. That will make it seem a bit more realistic and then decide where you want this placed. So I give myself the extra room and I guess I will have to go find my scissors because now I need to come and snip that top and bottom scrap piece off. There we go, I found them here. Okay, so I just turn this paper over whatever's hanging off the bottom and off the top, you're just going to snip off and you're ready to go. So this piece you can then add to a nice shaded spruce border. I've cut this piece at three and one eighth by four and one eighth. And we're just putting tape or seal or glue on the back of that. This is just a teeny tiny border. It's not as big as we usually do because I really wanted something very subtle. But I think I went a little too close to the edge. Mm, that's okay. That will be fine. There, just a very, very subtle border for your shaded spruce. And then, because we're getting bold, we're going to do some more lemon lime twist. And this one is going to be three and three eighths by four and three eighths. This goes right in the middle. You can pop it up on dimensionals if you really want to, but I find we're adding a lot of dimension already with our critters and leaves. So you don't need to. gives it a bit more of a border. And now we're ready to decorate, okay? So you can cut out whatever sort of pieces you like. I'm just gonna walk you through what I decided to cut and you're welcome to use the dies and do something different. So I cut myself one large kind of grassy plant out of shaded spruce, two little leaves out of granny apple green, one little crocodile and one little sloth on basic white, and I'm gonna color those. I cut one flower from Daffodil Delight and one from Strawberry Sweet Sorbet. Sorry, from Sweet Sorbet. And then this little banner is the only dye that's not from this set. So I used the Stylish Shapes banners. This is the smallest one that they have. And I just chopped it in half. And that's how I was going to add a little sentiment. And speaking of sentiments, again, this is not part of the suite because that Jungle Pals doesn't have any words. So I just went in my stash and found something small. My sentiment comes from Darling Details and it just says hello there. But of course, you're welcome to go into your stash and grab anything that you have. It doesn't have to be the same. And I'm going to stamp that in Memento Black ink, which is also the ink that I used for my crocodile and for my little sloth. There we go. 
and then we can decorate. I will save my coloring because I would like to get rid of these little pieces. Okay, so mini dimensionals are going to be your best friend for this project. They're easy to fit in some of these tiny little places like your grasses and the flower centers. But if you don't have mini dimensionals, you can also cut some of the large dimensionals just in half and that will work as well for you. Okay. So don't be afraid to kind of go off your page a little because it still will be on the card. It doesn't have to be fully in this little box. So for my little plant, because it's the same color as my border, I'm going to move it all the way down so it's in line with that shaded spruce border, kind of like a grass line. And then I'm letting that leaf come off a little bit. Totally up to you, but I just thought it kind of fit a little nicer that way. Then we've got a couple little leaves here. We're not adding our crocodile yet because I do tend to like to color before I put them on the project, but you're going to kind of put your crocodile into place where you think you're going to want it. And then we'll tuck these leaves in behind. But again, this is just because I don't like a lot of loose pieces on my desk. I tend to worry that they'll disappear at some point. Okay, so my crocodile is just kind of sitting there and I'm going to take my two leaves, just tuck them in behind the crocodile. There we go. Okay, we've got our sentiment that is also going to float up in the sky. That one I could probably do one big dimensional. I like using my end pieces. I'm gonna go up here. Don't be afraid to cover some of those branches up. It's kind of a little collage that you have going on here. And we have our sloth, which we need to color, and a couple flowers. You can put dimensionals on these, but I would kind of just suggest grabbing your glue dots. It's probably the easiest way to get these two on. So again, because your crocodile is in place, you know where you want it it will be easy for you just to tuck these in behind and make them look exactly like you want. Okay. There we go. I'll come back to the flowers after I have a fun little um, embellishment that you can use as a flower center if you'd like, but we'll come back to that later. Let's do some coloring. So for my crocodile, I could have used any sorts of colors. We do have blends in Parakeet Party, in Lemon Lime Twist, but I chose the Granny Apple Green, and I'm going to use both the dark and the light. So I'm starting with the dark one, and I'm going to go over all the spots that I kind of would like a shadowed look. So it's completely up to you where you want this. I thought it was kind of cute to do all his little bumps and scales with the dark. And of course, the nice thing about blends is you can come back later and you can darken an area if you feel like you need a little bit more to it. It doesn't have to be perfect either. We're just adding a little bit of character. Anything you do is going to be great. All right, then you come along with the light granny apple green. We'll have to be a little bit careful around these teeth because I kind of wanted to leave them white if possible. But once we're past kind of that feature, you can switch to the, the uh, large tip because basically we're just going to go over top of every part of our crocodile right now. 
even the parts that we've already colored. So those shaded little scales and stuff, you're going to add color to the middle here. Might want to come back with my skinny tip to do the legs. But we're just going over everything right now, building our colors together. And you can see the more you layer the color, the more they're just going to blend together. I am going to come back, do his little feet with the skinny tip. Probably could have grabbed like a yellow or something for his toenails. But we'll just make them green. And then the nice thing, like I mentioned, if there's ever an area that you wish had more color, you just come back with your marker. You can lay down a little bit more character in there and kind of go until you're happy. There. Then for the sloth, so I'm pretty happy with my crocodile. It, as it sets, the colors will kind of blend a little bit more. Here's my sloth. I decided to go with a ivory for his face, just so it was something a little different. And then you could have chose from our beautiful selection of like natural tones, because sloths can come in many different colors and shades. But I just went with my tried and true crumb cake. So I'm using the dark one first again. And everyone has their own styles. Some people will start with the light, and then they'll add a dark texture. So it's definitely demonstrator dependent. And if you find a demonstrator who's like really good at coloring, just listen to what they say because I'm not, but it's working. It's not my strong suit, but that's why I like these blends because it makes me look good even though I'm not a great color. All right, and then we've got our light crumb cake coming in over top. Once again, covering every single part here. I'm just doing this very rough to start. I need my fine tip. do a little detail here. These two can get popped up on dimensionals. Surprise, surprise. And we'll make our card cool. There we go. Here's your little sloth. And a crocodile. There we go. Okay, so I mentioned one more thing with these flowers. And um, actually, perhaps we'll attach this to the card first, just because you want to let those flowers dry. Okay, so now the fun part is getting this little panel onto your card without closing the card up. So if you were to put adhesive all over the back of this, it would close the card and you would not be able to open this little flap. So the only place we want adhesive is on this green panel. OK, 
okay? So it's your choice. You can either decide to put the adhesive straight on the green, keeping in mind that you're not covering the entire green, you're just kind of covering this middle right-hand side. Or my choice is I'm just gonna go where my sloth is and kind of put dimensionals over under him. Okay, so here's my sloth. I'm going to put a few dimensionals in that small space. It's not even halfway through the card. It's maybe a third of the way. Okay, I'm putting my dimensionals here. I could have just as easily put them on here, but it's just enough to prop this section up without doing the rest of the card. Now you're going to line this up so you have about a white even border on the top, bottom, and the right, okay? You will have extra green showing. It's not gonna be an even um, space compared to the white, but that will be symmetrical for your card here. See? Open, shut. Okay, last fun piece. Here we go. So I have my friend Martina Auer in Australia, or Australia, Austria, to thank for this little tip. So she used our loose daisy embellishments and she decided to use these for flower centers on a card that she had previously done. So I've adopted that. We're gonna use them as flower centers and then we're also gonna add one up here for decor. So here's where the putty end of my take your pick tool is going to come in handy because I do not want to sit here and have to try and pick up this teeny tiny little embellishment even though I maybe could but I might get sticky doing it. So I'm going to put the tiniest dot of glue because a glue dot will be too big for these but tiny dot of glue in this flower centers and on my tag then I'm going to take my putty end and you just press gently onto the flower you would like to pick up and set. You can move it using the uh, pokey end because the glue is very easy. And this is why I did it last because this glue is not instant dry. You're going to want to leave it alone for probably 20 minutes at least just to make sure it gets into the right position. And I'm tucking just that little green stem Kind of under my crocodile and under the adjacent flower because I wanted it to just look like the flower center, not a flower in the middle. So just tuck that under. If you really wanted to, you could cut it off. But it works just like that. You can also use the other colors too, but I like to the orange in the center or the yellow. And there we go. There is our adorable card using four celebration items. I told you three, and that is so, so fun. So this is a really cute card just to pass on to a friend, maybe to brighten their day, or if you have a little one in your life, they might like this for a birthday card. Feel free to change the sentiments and feel free to add whatever characters you'd like on the inside. So I did the sloth, but just a reminder, there's so many other jungle creatures. You could do Toucan Sam, Tony the Tiger, this fun little like Zaboomafu. So kind of think outside the box if you're creating with this. Um, my other fun I thought is this little sloth on this string of uh, leaves. Might look really cute inside there too. So a couple ideas for you. I hope you liked this week's project. Please um, make sure to like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. And uh, if you just put a like on the video, then I also know that you've seen it too. If you are online every Tuesday at noon, I will be posting a video and you can watch it right away. Or of course you can watch these anytime because they are on replay forever. And all the measurements, just a reminder, are in the description so you can come back and recreate this card with different paper and different uh, creatures and features, whatever works for you. So lovely to see you guys. Stay warm and I will see you next week. Bye.